Okay, so uh, next video, this one's gonna be a little bit shorter, pretty straightforward. We're just gonna talk about very quickly how to get input from a user. Um, this is kind of important, right? Most applications are gonna interact with users, so we need to be able to provide feedback to the user to say, hey, provide these types of values, these are the kind of things we're looking for, and then we need to have a process to uh, basically acquire whatever it is that they input they, they wanna provide. In this case, uh, when we're talking about terminal applications, um, that are not, you know, user interface driven with buttons and 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 uh, um, text boxes and and check boxes and radio buttons and things of that sort. Um, we have to rely really on the on the command prompt um, and what the user actually provides in terms of input that way. Um, so there's a couple of things that you really have to remember that a lot of uh, new to this uh, language people <laughs> forget. Um, if you, and, and I'm just gonna enumerate them, there's also pieces of this um, that you won't necessarily understand at this point, and I don't require you to. Um, this is one of those sort of black box pieces where I just care that you know how to do it um, and, and the exact code syntax that you need to be able to do it, and I care less at this point uh, whether or not you understand why or how it's working. Um, obviously, uh, we can't create any sort of uh, very interesting programs or applications with beginner skill sets in Java if we can't communicate with the user back and forth uh, and solicit input from them. Uh, okay, so the, the very first thing you have to do if you're going to be uh, acquiring input from the user in, in this method that I'm about to show you um, is you need to rely on a specific library that Java has out there that um, you can use. Uh, it's called the IO library. Um, and the way that you would import that into your application so that you can use it in your code below is right below your package statement, you want to have an import statement. So you, you'll notice this is outside of your class, right? If, if we're talking about uh, the class um, that we've created, it's outside of your class, but it's <clears throat> below your package statement in NetBeans. If you didn't have a package statement, um, it could be the very first thing that you do. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> but when that means uh, package declarations up there, this is going to go just beneath that. So what you want to type is the import is a reserved word. Uh, you'll notice it's blue. Uh, and then java.io.star. You'll see there are actually uh, lots of potential uh, libraries that are out there that are available to you. Um, you can get very specific about which pieces of the library you'd like to import uh, for the sake of simplicity and less typing. I'm just going to import all of them. So the way that you do that is by saying the star. Uh, there, so we're going to import java.io.star, and that's going to give us some access to classes that we need to be able to do the things that we want to do. Okay. The next thing we need to do um, is at the end of our uh, main method declaration, which is where I'm, I'm at right now, public static void main. Um, we need to add something that says throws io exception. You don't have to understand what this is right now. We'll actually talk about exceptions <coughs> and exception handling next week. Um, but for now, what I just need you to know is that you're just going to add that blindly. That's going to go there. Again, this will make more sense down the road. Um, but for now, uh, we're not going to address that. We're just going to add it there and say, hey, we need this to make it work. Okay. Um, the final piece of accepting it blindly is this piece of code. What we're going to say is we want to create a buffered reader object. Uh, you can call it whatever you want to. This is a variable name. I'm going to call it int since it's going to help us get input in. Um, we're going to use this uh, other, sh the rest of this declaration to make everything or to set everything up that we want to use. Okay, so what we've just done here is we've created a, a, an object called n. Think of it conceptually for now uh, as uh, the same as declaring a variable in memory. Um, but what we've done is we've created this thing called n in memory. We can talk about n, we can use things uh, that are associated with n, uh, and that's fine. Um, and what this is saying basically is we're gonna use the system.n, um, uh, the equivalent of the, of the, the command prompt, um, essentially is what we're gonna go for here. Um, and what we can do uh, is we can tell the user what we're looking for in terms of uh, input from them. So generally speaking, you'll see this as a print statement, and we'll say, enter your name, say, as an example. So we're basically communicating with the user at this point. We're saying, hey, this is what we want you to give us, okay? Um, the next piece of that is going to basically acquire whatever it is that they type. So we're gonna use this, this uh, variable that we created up here called n, 
and if we hit the dot operator, um, you'll see that there's a, a method called read line. We're going to say in dot read line, and essentially what this is going to do is it's going to take when, when this executes, this will get created in memory. The next thing that will happen is we'll print some output to the screen to the screen, and then what will happen is the application will wait for the user to type something once it hits this this particular piece of code. Um, now what we want to do, and what this method is going to do, is it's going to return whatever the user types. So if we want to be able to use that, what we probably want to do is store it into a variable, right? Um, so what we're doing is we're creating this variable called input. We're going to uh, request the user to type something in. When they type something in and they press enter, what's going to happen is that value that they typed is going to be stored in our variable called input. Everything that comes out of read line is going to be a string. Yeah, if we look at the Java docs for it, you'll see that read line uh, is a string. Uh, there we go. Let's wait for that to pop up. Um, read line um, reads a line of text. A line is considered to be terminated by any of the of a line feed or carriage return. Um, and so what it's going to do is it's going to return us a string value. If we were doing things with numbers or we were trying to um, you know, work with some other data types, we, what we have to do is we have to convert that string uh, into whatever data type we needed it to be before we could work with it. But for this example, we're not doing any of that and we haven't talked about any of that. So uh, all I simply want to do is, is get the input that was provided by the user and then I'm going to echo it back to them just for this example. Um, right. So what this is going to do, uh, when we get to this point, it's going to store the value that the user types in our variable called input. And the next thing we do is we're going to print hello and uh, whatever was stored, basically whatever that was typed by the user, right? If we run this, what you'll see is enter your name appears. So at this point in the, in the process, we've had a buffered reader has been declared, and then we've printed enter your name. And now what's happening is we're sitting right here at this method. It's waiting for us to do something. Right. If we click down here in our output window, you'll see we get a cursor, uh, and we can type our name. And if we press return, uh, it can move forward past this line, and now we're here, and it just basically echoes whatever it is that we just typed. So, a couple things that you need to watch out for. Um, keep in mind, if you don't do this uh, package import, if, this, if you don't import this library, if I comment that out, uh, what's going to happen is it's not going to know what IO exception is. The compiler and the application won't know what buffered reader is, input stream reader, all of that will be foreign. The reason that we have access to those kinds of objects and those classes um, is because we're importing this library and that's where these particular things reside. So if we uncomment that, um, everything's right in the world. If we forget to append the throws IO exception, we'll get another error. And if we looked at this, it says unreported exception must be caught or declared to be thrown. You don't have to understand what that means right now. We'll talk about it probably next week. Um, but just as a, as a reminder that if you run into this particular error, what that's saying is that you forgot to put your throws IO exception up here at the top beside your main method. And that's it. So um, using this uh, little tutorial here and uh, the string operators tutorial uh, on the other video, um, you should be able to do this assignment three. And uh, if you have any questions along the way, certainly you can feel free to ask me. I've posted some uh, some NetBeans packages um, to uh, Blackboard uh, as examples that you can use to take a look at this as well. So uh, again, if you have any problems, just let me know.